Hello and welcome to Pod to Watch from Page to Screen, episode 30. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Lucy. Last time we got accused of being a parcel tongue and had a meeting with good old Dumbledore. Dumbledore! Today, we'll... <laughs> Dumbledore. Today we'll be taking some polyjuice potion. Ho ho ho! Okie dokie. <laughs> so, students are more worried than ever about the Chamber of Secrets situation that something that could cause harm to a ghost seems extra troubling. This mm. worry is just kind of left out of the movie. Really. <laughs> don't care about that. We're not really aware of that. Yeah, don't, they don't <laughs> care about Nick. Also left out of the movie is Fred and George being up to their usual mischief again. Mm-hmm. Students have been avoiding Harry left, right and centre because they're terrified that he's the heir of Slytherin. Fred and George find this just hysterical and t- have taken to following Harry around, saying, Make way for the heir of Slytherin, serious evil wizard coming through. The, I feel like the films do just miss out this relationship between the twins and Harry that I really love yeah. in the books. Big brother energy. Kind of, yeah, big brother, but always nice to him. Yes. Big brother. Or sometimes in like a teasing way or a bit mean, but not. It's It's almost like, uh, I feel like they're cousins, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, like it's not <laughs> close kind of, enough to be mean. But it's close yeah. enough that they have a good, strong relationship. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Harry doesn't mind them doing this, because it shows that Fred and George find these theories about Harry being the heir of Slytherin just ridiculous, mm. and don't believe them at all, which is good to know, nice to know. Yeah. The trio and the Weasleys have all chosen to stay at Hogwarts this year, and with everyone being terrified of the chamber, they're enjoying having all the space to themselves. Mm-hmm. On Christmas morning, Hermione comes into the boys' dorm to give them their presents, and tell them that the Polyjuice Potion is finally ready. Oh, we've Lovely. been waiting. <laughs> For Christmas, Hagrid has sent Harry a large tin of treacle fudge, which Harry decides to soften by the fire before eating. Ron has given him a book called Flying with the Cannons, a book of interesting facts about his favourite Quidditch team. Hermione had bought him a luxury feather quill, and Mrs Weasley made him a new knitted jumper and a large plum cake. The fact that <laughs> Ron has bought him a book about his own favourite Quidditch team. I know! I don't know who the his is referring to. Like, is it? Because it's definitely Uh, Ron's, but is it uh, Harry's as well? Nah, I think that's going to be Ron's, like, (laughs) listen, mate, these are the greatest plays of all time. You've got to know all about them. Yeah. (laughs) For sure. Uh, I really, I really like hearing, like, every book, she goes into, like, detail (laughs) about his birthday and Christmas presents. And it's yep. it's like that vibe that you get from um, book five, just like the wizarding life. Yeah, yeah. And the the products that you can get, like luxury uh-huh. eagle feather quill, it just sounds nice. Right. I like it. It's a nice detail. Yeah, I agree. I always love as well hearing um, the few times that it does mention presents that he gets from the Weasley, not from the Weasleys, mm. from the Dursleys, mm, and how yeah. like just random and stupid they are and then oh, in yeah, contrast to these what. like wonderfully heartfelt presents from people who aren't even his family but have kind of become his his family in the living world I think it's yeah really lovely. i've got it here what the dursleys get him i don't know why i left it out it was a toothpick <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a note telling him to find out whether he'd be able to stay at hogwarts for the summer holidays as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love it oh so sweet one, i think is the 50p, I can't remember what book it's yes. in, but the 50p, like, is it taped to a piece of paper, or am I... It's in the really first experience? one, I think, because they steadily get worse and worse. Yeah. And I think Ron is, like, really excited about it, isn't he? Yeah, it's like, that's such a funny shape. No, I, yeah, yeah the, the, just the contrast between, uh, between those just, like, stupid presents. Yeah, the people who should love him, and the people yeah. who actually love him. Yeah. It's like when you forget to buy someone a souvenir yeah. and like you just grab something from the airport. Like, that, <laughs> yeah. kind of, that kind of energy. It's like, oh, we've got a toothpick. Yeah, it's a it's a worm with the flag on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like they um, like the 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 thing is, if they really didn't care, they'd just send him nothing. It's almost like they go to the effort of sending him something awful and stupid to remind him <laughs> yeah. how much they we don't, don't care love about you. Him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just it's, in case you forgot. Yeah, exactly. It's sad, but it's kind of funny too. Yeah. <laughs> so then they go down for Christmas dinner, which isn't too eventful, but just as a side note, for decoration, they have warm, dry snow falling from the enchanted ceiling. Yeah. Sounds I lovely. I hope 
it disappears before it gets the table. Like, yeah. Just a soft covering of like dandruff on them. <laughs> like, warm and dry, it's fine, but wouldn't want yeah. it in my food. No. I wonder if it phases out like you see in the films or if it's more of mm. like a like it just disappears as soon as it makes contact with something really. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, like it just immediately Like it settles in your hair but then it's gone. Yeah. Maybe. Oh I like that. Because you still want it to feel like you're being snowed on well, maybe, maybe maybe not. But if it's warm. Yeah, it's it nice. nice. It's toasty. Yeah. Um, oh, I wish snow was it's... warm and dry. Yeah. Although then it would never melt. Oh true. <laughs> Didn't think of the logistics of making the snow dry and warm. Yeah. I'll we'll have to go back to the drawing board on that one. <laughs> so then Hermione tells Harry and Ron about her drugged cupcake plan, which is pretty <laughs> similar from book to film, apart from one detail that's missed out of the film in the plan, which is that Harry and Ron are going to hide Crumb and Goyle in the broom cupboard. Um, Hermione... I'll just say here, this uh -huh. isn't a deleted scene. Yeah. They do show them dragging them into the cupboard and then coming yeah. out, like rubbing their necks. Yeah, you see, you see Crab and Goyle leaving at the end, do you? In the deleted On... scene, but not in yeah. the actual film. But not in the film. And then you also see, just before the Polyjuice Potion scene, see them dragging them into that cupboard. Yeah. They just cut it completely, yeah. which is fair enough. Yeah. It's not super necessary. Yeah. Hermione, also in the film, says that she got Millicent's Bulstrode's hairs while she was asleep. In the book, she says uh, she took them while she was wrestling with Millicent at the jewel at the dueling club. <laughs> I see you going to ask a question, and I have the same question guaranteed. Go on. Asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find the clip where she says this. I was like, maybe she maybe she gives more context. I think Does she? she like whilst she's sleeping. I think that. Rings, that line rings a bell. Hang on. Chamber of Secret Script. Because I know that we can get a script of Chamber of Secrets now. <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Okay, okay. It just I was, says... I was very confused when I was yeah. reading through this. I could have sworn she said sleeping, but Ron says, Whose hair are you ripping out, then? Hermione says, I've already got mine. Millicent Bulstrode. She's in Slytherin. I got this off her robes. Mm. It doesn't, doesn't say how, how, but at least it's she, just how she came across that. Yeah, that's. But Sorry about just that. Run up behind people, pluck. To be fair, actually, you say that. It's quite often that I. I mean, not quite often, but sometimes you have people who like one of their hairs is like come out and it's like on their sleeve or something. So yeah. She kind of just like nabbed it quick. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's just. Doesn't, doesn't give too much context, doesn't really explain. <laughs> but, I mean, not that much of a, not that big of a deal, not that much of an no. issue. <laughs> the movie adds a nice little detail here where Ron does a lohomora on the cupcakes. In the book, they just leave the cupcakes on the banister. Despite this little change, Ron's line, how thick could you get, is directly taken from the book. This line applies considerably more when the kids <laughs> are literally <laughs> levitating <laughs> yeah. in the middle of a hallway. Oh look, flying cakes. What? <laughs> They're clearly safe for consumption <laughs> and not meant his... for us at all. Right. Here's the thing. <laughs> I understand that the visual of the floating cakes and having them, you know, having Crab and Gore be able to like walk up to them looks a lot nicer than just having them on the like a the freight like it, it's a lot more visually interesting and pleasing well, and composition. I think wise. they like are trying to hark back to like Ron not being able to do um, right. swish and flick. Right. It's a nice little detail, but mm. <laughs> it's a bit stupid. <laughs> I, it's just, <laughs> it just. I mean, it Ron makes... is right in the book. Like, why would you eat cupcakes that are just no. lying around but floating? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I, I have eaten baked goods I've found around school. <laughs> yeah, me too, it. to be fair. It's, yeah. it's, like, I've, I'm not gonna lie, I, last day before lockdown, I found half a yum yum on the side in an art room. Uh huh. Just tucked right in. <laughs> half, though, half, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Shame. ashamed to admit Shame. it. Shame. I Shame. have no fear of. Listen, the the germs just make me stronger. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, Fair play. 
I anyway. And you've what, had COVID. And <laughs> so clearly yeah, this, your theory is, is much working later. really that well. much later. Yeah, no, true, true. <laughs> uh, that wasn't the yum yum, okay? Now, this is me in defence of Crab and Goyle. If you see... Yeah. Uh, they were whole cupcakes as well. They weren't even half eaten. I would yeah, have yeah. nabbed those. I would have ASAP. totally done that. But I have definitely floating, done that, no. like, with whole foods before. Like, yeah. in the cafe that I used to work in, people would just leave some some cakes and stuff mm -hmm. especially if they've had afternoon tea we did like it's huge afternoon tea and so right. often they would like take them home but sometimes there's really stupid people that leave it <laughs> and i'm like yeah. why would you leave it but thank you because i would <laughs> definitely eat it straight away but then if like yeah. if they, we saw that they'd had like a little nibble I would cut it off, cut off like the nibble side yeah. and then cut you know, it up would... into the pieces for everyone. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I will clarify. I ate the other end of the yum yum and let them, left the middle. Oh, OK, good. Oh, OK. Yeah. I didn't I didn't go in from the same end that my respect for you has flown back up <laughs> to, to its original. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> um, oh, dear. It's... Maybe I maybe I shouldn't be admitting that on the internet, but you know what? I no shame. Be be. No, actually, well. now that I know that, f fully support. Yeah, Sam. fully support that. Yeah, yeah. I. No I'm spit. Not ashamed. Not ashamed. It's fine. <laughs> no spit. Probably grubby little year seven fingerprints, but ah. um, it's you know what? It, like it tasted good, and I didn't have the money to buy one, so <laughs> yeah. I'm just being resourceful. Yeah. That's all that's going on. <laughs> but. Uh, Crab and Goyle in the films are, are done. That was yeah. stupid. Yeah, come on. Um, that, was, that was a silly decision. It Clearly. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. It really, really was. These aren't drugged, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the book, Harry, Ron, Harry and Ron steal Crab and Goyle's shoes and Hermione steals bigger robes out of the laundry since Harry and Ron will be much bigger once they've taken the potion. Mm. Conveniently, the detail of how Hermione knew what size they were or where the laundry even is, is is completely left out. Yeah, I want to I want to see the laundry room. I imagine it being like adjacent to the kitchens. Yeah, like um, clothes floating everywhere you know and like a kind, kind of, of Mrs. Weasley's kitchen vibe where yeah. it's all doing itself. I kind of imagine it as like a combination of the door room in, in Monsters Inc. with all the doors on the rails mm -hmm. kind of flying around one off the other. A combination of that and the potion room in Shrek 2. Fairy Godmother's oh, potion yeah. room. Yeah, where they've got all the weird little like vats of stuff. Like a combination yes. of those two rooms. That's what the Hogwarts laundry room is in my mind. Yeah. Um, and like a few house elves just running around doing their thing. <laughs> that's that's kind of what I envision. <laughs> but yeah, I that I wish you know how like they pop into the kitchens at one point. I wish we could just like pop into the Yes. I, I never really think about them having to do laundry. No, me I neither. Guess a lot of kids. Yeah. Even with um, that line, like I've never really considered it before yeah. doing this like hmm, laundry. Yeah. No, me neither. Yeah. Yeah, it's strange. <laughs> In the film, the potion remains a murky green colour. Uh, but in the book, Hermione's turns a sickly yellow, Harry's turns khaki bogey colour, mm. and Ron's turns into a dark murky brown. <laughs> One for kids there, bogey. Ha <laughs> 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 bogeys, ha! <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the book also describes in a bit more detail kind of the experience mm. of taking a polyjuice potion, which I will read now. Immediately, his inside started writhing, as though he'd just swallowed live snakes, doubled up, he wondered whether he was going to be sick. Then a burning sensation spread rapidly from his stomach to the very ends of his fingers and toes. Mm. Next, bringing him gasping on a bras grasping, gasping, gasping <laughs> <laughs> to all fours, came a horrible melting feeling as the skin all over his body bubbled like hot wax. And before his eyes, his hands began to grow. The fingers thickened. The nails broadened and the knuckles were bulging like bolts. I love that, bulging like bolts. Mm. His shoulders stretched painfully and the prickling on his forehead told him his hair was creeping down towards his eyebrows. Mm. His robes rippled as his chest expanded like a barrel bursting its hoops. His feet were agony in his shoes, four sizes too small. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I love that. It doesn't sound particularly pleasant. The, the movie does a really good job, but that's nice. I would to agree. Hear. 
Yeah. It's the, a good the bubbling is like in the movie. I think that must be one of the best done visual effects. Is it visual special effects? Mm -hmm. Special effects yeah, um good. in in all the like a really? lot of the movies. I think it's it's oh. so smooth and the the mm. bubbles they really look like they're on his his skin. Yeah. For for the time particularly it's very just the transition yeah. between like Daniel Radcliffe and um the actor who plays Goyle is very it's it's pretty pretty well done. Yeah. yeah I would agree. It's quite impressive. Mm. In the book, their voices are now Crab and Goyle's voices because of course they have mm. their voice boxes. But <laughs> in the film they keep their original voices. Um and I did mm. check but it is still written that way throughout the books. It is still written that they, they take on the person's voice, which, as I said, it, it makes sense because of mm. the they have the voice boxes. But I thought it might have changed because sometimes J.K. Rowling like decides like, oh, that... Like in later books. Yeah, that's nicer mm. in the films. I'll adopt yeah. that. But um, yeah. no, she really stuck to her guns on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, which makes makes sense. Yeah. But I... I also think, again, I feel like I say this all the time, I think it makes sense in the film as well, because it's a nice kind of reminder, yeah. and just sort of, we are looking at Harry, not um, yeah. you know, Boyle or Brunkle. Or yeah, whatever. I mean, a lot of people say like, oh, you know about um, Helena Bonham Carter doing mm. um, Hermione pretending to be Bellatrix. Yeah. <laughs> but these two actors were told that they had minor roles, very mm. few lines. And they do a thumping good job. Mm. They do such a good job. They do well, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Their their demeanour like immediately changes. It's yeah. it's really it's really great acting. Mm. And particularly um the, the guy who plays Goyle, I feel like is I'm I forget that I'm not looking at Daniel Radcliffe sometimes. Yes. I really get Harry vibes. Yeah. It's yeah. Great. It's a, it's a shame. I think one of them went to went to prison, didn't they? They had like oh, yeah. quite a bad background. Um, uh, it was. I think. I think he was in, involved in um, some kind of riots. Yeah. Um, he actually plays uh, crab, I believe. Right. Um, it's a shame. Went to prison for a while. Yeah. Those two are really a really good duo. Mm. Ron looks at Harry and says, "You don't know how bizarre it is to see Goyle thinking." <laughs> 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 That's in the books. Um, uh -huh. Obviously not in the films. Which I thought was a great little, <laughs> great little, <laughs> like I never thought about that before. It's like different expressions that you never really see mm. <laughs> on yeah. somebody. There's a nod to Percy's secret relationship here <laughs> as Ron and Harry are heading down to the Slytherin common room. Obviously they've left Hermione, she's told them to just go. Mm. They're going down to the Slytherin common room and they bump into, quote, a girl with long curly hair who, who uh, is a Ravenclaw. And then five minutes later, they bump into Percy and they have uh, quite a similar, like, what are you doing down here? Um, <laughs> interaction <laughs> from mm -hmm. book to movie. Then when Malfoy finds them after Percy leaves, he says... That Peter Weasley, I've noticed him sneaking around a lot lately. Uh, obviously, again, only in the books, because this Percy secret relationship thing is only in the books, not mm. really referenced in the films at all. Um, I love all of this stuff about Percy's <laughs> relationship. I find it really fun. Yeah. In the film, Harry has left on his glasses by mistake, and Tom Felton ad-libs this just exquisite line. Reading? I didn't know you could read. It's just <laughs> beautiful. It's amazing. I would like to add as well that I hear a lot of people saying that he ad libbed because he forgot his. Oh, did you did you just say he forgot his line? No, you just said that he. No, I didn't. Did he forget his no. line? People say he did, and I would like to PSA like PSA in defence of Tom Felton and say that he he didn't forget his line because in the original script his next line is what are you doing down here Weasley and he does he immediately after this line turns to Percy and says what are you doing down here Weasley so he just he just added in for the bounce I guess oh yeah it... it's not it wasn't a mistake he just he just added in I, it bothers me sometimes when 
I feel like I sound like a, a TikTok Draco Malfoy stan now. I'm like, <laughs> don't say that about Tom Felton. Yeah, it's like uh, when it... um, people always say this about Will Smith in Prince of Bel Air. They say that his acting is only really good. With there's like this famous scene. I don't know whether you've seen much of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Not much. There's this famous scene where he's talking really emotionally about his father, um, the character, mm. and the character Will gets really upset because his father is very much not in his life mm -hmm. and people are saying like oh his father in real life was like that too like it that's why it's so emotional and mm -hmm. will smith time and time again said please <laughs> stop saying that because my father was one of the greatest men i have ever known and yeah. it's really a, a shame that his his memory on the internet is mm -hmm. is bad because of how yeah. good my acting is. <laughs> like, I'm a good actor, like, yeah. stop seeing yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I just see that a lot of people are like, did you know he forgot his line? Yeah. Like, um, he did not forget no. his line, but he did. Live. He's just it's good. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, I'm glad you said that. Mm. Put the myth to bed. <laughs> <laughs> the password to the Slytherin common room is about as unimaginative as it gets, um, which is a detail that we don't get in the film which is pure blood huh mm. who'd have thought <laughs> malfoy gives harry and ron a daily profit that he thinks will give them a laugh mm. which obviously it doesn't i oh, will <laughs> <laughs> i'll read it this uh, also does not happen in the film it says inquiry at the ministry of magic arthur weasley head of the misuse of muggle artifacts office was today fined 50 galleons for bewitching a muggle car mr lucius malfoy a governor of hogwarts school of witchcraft and wizardry where the enchanted car crashed earlier this year called today for the mrs mr weasley's resignation weasley has brought the ministry to disrepute Mr. Malfoy told our reporter. He is clearly unfit to draw up our laws, and his ridiculous Muggle Protection Act should be scrapped immediately. Mr. Weasley was unavailable for comment, although his wife told reporters to clear off or she'd set the family ghoul on them. <laughs> <laughs> Something that we haven't really mentioned because it's been quite small is that throughout the books, they keep on talking about how guilty Harry is about this mm. car situation. And obviously this is it makes them <laughs> it doesn't give them a laugh let's put it that way <laughs> <laughs> and it obviously riles up ron um as well mm. this is where he has to say that he has a stomach ache mm. in the film however he makes the excuse about the stomach ache after malfoy says that the weasleys are an embarrassment to the wizarding world all of them um, <laughs> I have to do the faces, otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs> so, the same general vibe, but just different circumstances from book to film. In the book, Malfoy has a, a little rant about Colin, our favourite dreamboat. <laughs> yeah. He says, a decent headmaster would never have let slime like that creevy in. Malfoy started taking pictures with an imaginary camera and did a cruel but accurate impression of, impression of Colin. Potter, can I have your picture, Potter? Can I have your autograph? Can I lick your shoes, please, Potter? He dropped his hands and looked at Harry and Ron. What's the matter with you two? Far too late, Harry and Ron forced themselves to laugh, but Malfoy seemed satisfied. Perhaps Crabbe and Goyle were always slow on the uptake. <laughs> Oh, see, there's the little things that I like that you miss out mm. from, from the films because you don't really get um, these little quips from the narrator. Yeah. This rant, as usual, like Malfoy often gets onto the topic of Harry. This is why I shipped Harry. Mm. Um, <laughs> one of the many reasons. Yeah, it gets Malfoy onto the subject of Harry and he goes on to say how he finds the rumours that Harry is the heir of Slytherin ridiculous. Mm. So that's how it happens in the book. In the film, Malfoy says that Dumbledore is the worst thing that ever happened to Hogwarts. And Harry says, you're wrong! <laughs> <laughs> that always makes me laugh in the film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Harry ends up having to suggest that he, Harry Potter, is worse than Dumbledore mm -hmm. in the films. So then with these two like conversations in the book and the film, they both like lead on to Harry asking, 
you must have some idea who's behind it all. And Malfoy says that he doesn't. And in the book, Harry asks if the person who opened the chamber last time was caught. And they have this great little back and forth, which uh, it says, oh, yeah, whoever it was was expelled, said Malfoy. They're probably still in Azkaban. Azkaban, said Harry, puzzled. Azkaban, the wizard prison goyle, said Malfoy, looking at him in disbelief. Honestly, if you were any slower, you'd be going backwards. <laughs> oh dear. This is why I like, I love Malfoy, because although he's so mean, it's mm. so funny. <laughs> uh, it's like really smart, it's like smart mean. <laughs> mm. Something I can appreciate, because in high school, usually the things are like not good at all. Like, not smart at all. Anyway, in the book, Malfoy reveals that they've got their own secret chamber under the drawing room floor in Malfoy Manor. And Ron lets out a HO! <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, that doesn't happen in the film, but I'm assuming this is the cellar that they use in the Deathly Hallows? Do you think that's. I would, I would guess so, yeah. yeah. I assume I would, they don't have, I mean... like,. Another secret chamber, yeah. <laughs> like, like specific dungeons. Yeah, they might have spe for, specific for dungeons parts. actually. Maybe one for storage, one for people. People. <laughs> <laughs> How dark. Also storage, I guess. Yeah, storing. People. Anyway, <laughs> storage. Yeah, inanimate storage. Yeah. Full storage. Weird thought. I wonder if like all pure blood like family homes like comes with free cellar <laughs> comes with free dun dungeons. Hey. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. They realise they're turning back into themselves and leave. In the book, they just look at each other in horror. But the film adds Harry saying hair and Ron saying scar. There's a nice little deleted scene here um, that I actually never had seen before where the actual Crab and Goyle, obviously I've talked about them being dragged into the cupboard, but then they're coming out of the cupboard rubbing their necks and they run into Harry and Ron looking like really weird because they're like in the middle of transforming back into themselves. The, mm -hmm. the makeup and the prosthetics, I think probably they would have put on, is brilliant. Mm. Um, and I'll, I'll link it in the description. And I will just say the deleted scene is after a scene that is actually in the film, so be sure to watch it all the way through so you so you can get it. Have you have you seen that one before? Uh, it's one of those things that I feel like I could have done, but you don't I, know con you don't not consciously I'm not aware. Of I'll it. I'll paste it real quick and check. <laughs> That's just the same actors and wigs, isn't it? Is it? I think, I'm pretty sure they just, I'm pretty sure they've just got the actors for Crab and Goyle and just put them in the Harry wig and Ron wig. Really? Because it, it looks super weird to me. I think it's just the expressions they're doing. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I think that is, it, I think it just looks dodgy because it's either green screen or split. That looks like it might be green screen. Yeah, actually. maybe I it's, um. I think oh, it just looks, they're like lit slightly differently. Right. Let's see. Interesting. I haven't seen that before. Mm, isn't that weird? Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll just quickly rewatch it. Yeah, they've they've just whacked wigs on them. That's funny. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> oh, I thought they did. Wow, their their acting is really good. <laughs> yeah. No, they they yeah. I agree. Man. That's funny though, the classic like turn to each other and turn back and Yeah. <laughs> Let's just pretend that never happened. <laughs> Do -do -do. That's that's true actually. I'm glad they didn't include this in yeah, the movie. It doesn't make imagine? a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a it's a fun scene. Yeah, regardless. I'm glad that they like did it so fully as a yeah. deleted scene. Some some of them yeah. are like only they give up on it after like the screenplay. But Right. Yeah. <laughs> secret Malfoy cellar isn't mentioned in the film so the only silver mm. lining they have from the trip in the film is that they know for sure that Malfoy isn't the hair hair isn't the heir of Slytherin in the mm. book however Ron says he's going to write to his dad about the cellar so he can he can have a little raid get a bit of revenge mm. they come back to tell Hermione everything they've learned uh, and Myrtle's line ooh wait till you see it's awful <laughs> I did that I butchered that but 
No, that was, that was good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Uh, that's taken straight from the book. I do like to in include some of these that are taken straight from the book because sometimes they really mm. surprise me uh, and that's yeah. one of them. I think they do a really good job with uh, Hermione's half cat, half girl yeah. transformation. I'll read, I'll read the description. Because when I read the description, I was like trying to imagine what I would do as like a makeup artist. Right. And I think I would have done a much worse job, obviously, because I'm not a makeup artist, but I can't even like imagine right. um, what it is. Her face was covered in black fur, her eyes had gone yellow, and there were long pointed ears poking through her hair. This is quite a short description, but like, hmm. I can kind of imagine it, but not imagine it at the same time. Right. Like, I have to... I often have that like, oh, I really want to draw this thing. And then I start to draw mm. it and I realize I have no details in my brain whatsoever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of I, Hermione's cat? Hang on. I'm just, I'm just pulling up a picture to remind myself. Cat Sona. Hermione's <laughs> first zone. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh dear. I kind of like that they committed to making it very, It's. I mean, it's very cat. Yeah, that's true. I kind of wish that it was a little bit more... It kind of looks like she's just wearing a mask and her hair's, like, behind it. I always wish, that, wish they'd somehow... That's true, ...integrated yeah. the hair and... I think it's... I think it's fine. I think it's... I think it looks... It's very striking. Yeah. I don't think it's quite how I imagined it. I think I imagined it slightly less cattish. Yeah, I think actually... I for some reason, I remember in the film it being less cat-like. Mm. I think like from the nose down it should be like human and then as you say like with the hair like hair pro properly on and the ears right. like poking out right it's very like many as well it, it's mm. quite she almost looks like a some kind of big cat yeah I don't know I, I like it I think it's very yeah it's you know you've got to open the door and be like whoa I'm like, like it's yeah you've got to have that oh my god look at Hermione kind of moment so yeah there's a really cool if uh, anybody wants to google uh, listening Hermione Granger cat there's a really weird one where a picture of them doing the makeup mm, for that yeah looks really strange I I like the color of that cat it's like very light and hmm. it's a nice color. It's a, nice <laughs> it's a nice bit of behind the scenes stuff. It's <laughs> cool. In the film, lastly, it's Ron who <laughs> says, look at your tail. But as we're very used to by now, Ron is much kinder in the book. Uh, and it's actually Myrtle who says, you'll be teased something dreadful. Wait till everyone finds out you've got a tail. <laughs> <laughs> they love to make Ron uh, mean stupid <laughs> troll <laughs> uh -huh. um so yeah it's yeah. him that says it in the film and uh mm. that's that on that <laughs> <laughs> lovely jubbly yeah. all right well time, time for marauders map to explore the time for map. telly tubbies okie dokie sorry i've got that in my head now <laughs> I believe this is the only time we see the Slytherin common room True, yeah. in the books or films. I think so. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Production designer Stuart Craig said that he wanted the common room to look as though it had been carved out of the solid rock to reference its location mm. in the dungeon. He also said that the goal was for the cool toned space to directly contrast the cosy, earthy Gryffindor common room. Mm. And kind of highlight the difference, just how, how foreign this space was yeah. to... Harry and Ron, and and then also in turn the the viewer. It's not. It doesn't feel obviously. It's not familiar because we haven't been there before. Yeah. But it feels even less familiar because it feels quite uh, very different from the Gryffindor common room, and also just quite cold. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at pictures senses. of it, and I don't really mm. remember much about it from the film because I think the lighting is quite dark. It is quite dark. Like the wall is is really like ragged. Yeah. It does look like it's just been carved out. That's really clever. Mm. And this, and it's the cool floor one. is just like stone as well. Right. And then you have the big, the big window looking out onto mm. the, um, onto the into the lake, the Hogwarts lake, which is very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's interesting. Like when you see pictures, 
that aren't part of the film and then you see the film and you hardly mm-hmm. see any of the details of what they actually yeah. put in it's it's crazy yeah yeah it's mad yeah yeah very very cool set that i am um, uh, it will it still be there when we next go uh i i'm hoping it will be because sometimes mm. they do keep like they just leave it yeah but i'm not sure fingers crossed when me and lucy were going to go to the studio tour last time but um <clears throat> i gave my daughter a cashew and uh, she had an anaphylactic shock um mm. <laughs> so we couldn't not go ideal. not ideal <laughs> <laughs> not, not good conditions mm-hmm. but yeah when we were going to go we were going to go for this slytherin um special it would have been so cool mm. yeah let's hope that they've got the uh the set still up there because yeah, we will it's very um, impressive we will do a pot to watch episode um yeah. about find some fun facts yeah well, some of our fun facts and favorite bits that we like and yeah um be chance for Details. anybody who does watch this <laughs> if there is anybody <laughs> who, who listens to this to uh to see what see what me and lucy look like uh-huh. which is always incredibly jarring and weird i always hate like listening to someone for a long time and then yeah, seeing their face I, really all... i don't want to know yeah really weird <laughs> yeah. but yeah if you, that's what you're interested in that will come in um in the next few months or mm. actually when when will this come out it might it might already be out to be fair potentially we might already have been there what february march april yeah, so it'll it'll be around when this airs that we oh, will be at the yeah. studio tour. That's weird because <laughs> we're we're doing a lot of episodes um, mm-hmm. together. So yeah, but if we're not, it would be it would be great to um, to see some like pictures of what it what it was like. Mm. Yeah, I was gonna say like oh yeah, they should do a Hufflepuff cool. one or Ravenclaw one, but I'm like. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing yeah. about Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw in the film. No, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, or much in yeah, the books, great. to be fair. True, also true. <laughs> yeah. We talk well, about Hufflepuff erasure. There is way more mm, Ravenclaw erasure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rough. Well, I don't know, actually. Hufflepuff is the only common room that you never actually see in the books. In the books, that's true. Yeah, but I think the hype right after the books ended about like oh hufflepuff blah blah, blah. i think yeah no that's true outside of the book the overcompensation of, um, like merchandising yeah like everyone's like oh you know puff pride etc etc et where's the claw pride come on yeah <laughs> <laughs> very true very true yeah shout out to the Ravens. yeah <laughs> <laughs> shout out to cho chang <laughs> cho um, chang I'm not going to sing that. I'll get into trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she she came up on my TikTok the other day and everyone in the comments was like, Cho Chang! And everyone was like, why are you calling this random white woman Cho Chang? Yeah. <laughs> it was, I was like, oh yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> on that note. On that note. That concludes this episode of Potter Watch from page to screen. Keep twiddling those dials. Keep each other safe. Keep faith. Good night. Good night. Lovely chaplain.